All right, my name is Captain Irving, and you're in F Troop. Now, oh, kitty. It's mail call at Fort Courage. Corporal Agarn hasn't heard from his girl Betty Lou back in Passaic for weeks. He can't wait to open her latest letter. How could she do this to me? I gave her the best years of my life. Engaged, seven years. Ah, well, you know how women are. Listen to this letter, Sarge. Dear Mr. Agarn, Mr. Agarn, I used to be poopsie. I think I'd rather be Mr. Agarn. He figures she must have another fellow. And I know who it is. I know who it is. It's Clarence, the horse car conductor. She never could resist a man in uniform. That'd be why she hooked up with you, right? But he has a nice shiny change maker. We used to carve our initials in every tree in downtown Passaic. We went through school together, Sarge. I was her hero. Her hero, huh? Uh-huh. Oh boy, O'Rourke's wheels are turning. That usually means he's going to do something stupid that'll backfire on someone else. Once she's delivered the mail, Wrangler Jane reminds Captain Parmenter that they're going on a picnic today. This looks like a nice spot, Wilton. Oh, it's kind of lonely, though, isn't it? How about that? <laughs> Don't worry, it won't be lonely for long. Wilton, you know what I'm in the mood for? Uh, chicken sandwich? <laughs> There it is! Huh? There what is? A bear! Whoa, what bear? That bear! Here, wait, wait, I'll this. Before Parmenter can get his gun out, the bear realizes these two want to be alone and three's a crowd, so he leaves. And he's been tearing up fences and gardens all over town. Well, I just have to set a trap for him, that's all. So much for her latest attempt at a romantic date with Captain I didn't get it. He makes a nice snare. We make a loop on the ground, like that. Then, when the bear puts his foot in the noose, see, the slightest little pressure on this rope, and zing! <laughs> if you didn't see that coming, or you saw it coming and didn't laugh anyway, I assume you're a robot telemarketer. It's right here. Undaunted and alone, the reckless, fiery Geronimo attacked an entire train of troops and ruthlessly shot down half a dozen men before riding triumphantly off. So? So you're gonna kill Geronimo. Good luck getting a pass from the captain to do that. What her work means is, Agarn is going to lie to Betty Lou and tell her he killed Geronimo. He doesn't really have to do it. It's just a little thing between a man and his girl. Ruthlessly shot him down and rode triumphantly off. Otherwise, things have been pretty much the same. Betty Lou, give me that letter. I'm going to run this in our afternoon edition. Daddy, that's wonderful. Just a little thing between a man and his girl and her newspaper publisher, Daddy. Next thing we know, most every paper in the country has picked up the story that Geronimo is dead. He what? Here it is, Mr. Secretary, in a newspaper, the Passaic Courier. A Corporal Agon has shot down the great Indian chief, Geronimo. That's the Secretary of War, second only to the President in command of the military. Today he'd be called the Secretary of Defense. He's going to make a special trip to Fort Courage and personally give Agarn a medal. Corporal Agarn slay Geronimo. Me, Geronimo! <laughs> Me, go slay Corporal Agarn. Or slaying? <laughs> if you saw my reviews of the 60s sitcom It's About Time, which I had to move to a different venue because the guy who owns the rights is not a nice person, you may recognize Klon, boss's big dumb enforcer. His real name was Mike Mazurki, and he was about as opposite of the characters he played as any person could be. Educated, intelligent, witty, skilled at a lot of things, he excelled at playing characters like Klon or Geronimo. He played a lot of sub-epsilon gangsters and street thugs and made his mark that way from 1934 right up to his death in 1990. I find him a perfect example of take what you got and run with it. He had the size and the look, and he was smart enough to make the most of it. You might also recognize his sidekick there as a rather young Jamie Farr, destined to become the fabulously cross-dressing Corporal Klinger on M.A.S.H. He was one of the most interesting characters ever put on that show, 
possibly because he may well be the character who grew the most over the course of the series. While you're still in quarantine, watch the show again and see what I mean. After you finish this review, of course. Me go see a cowies. Cousin Chief Wild Eagle. They near Fort Courage. They helped me find Corporal Agar. He's got it all figured out. Yo! See? We ride all night. Seek revenge. You forget. He ride fastest who ride alone. <laughs> Lots of luck. Or not. The Captain, Jane, and Dobbs have dug a pit to trap the bear in. They're spreading honey around it now to attract the critter. Speaking of taking what you have and running with it, let's watch Ken Berry in action for a bit. Dow, Dow, wait, wait. Here, wait, I need some leverage here. Yes. Let me make one little adjustment. That's better. Dobbs suggests that he play a bear mating call on his bugle. It's a thing he does. Was that a male or a female bear you saw? I didn't get that close. Well, I give him the big love call. That gets them whether they're male or female. Way back when I was learning to play trumpet, one day I sneezed into it. Now I know what all that frantic scratching at the door was. God damn it! I heard him! Come on, let's go! Wait, Jane. Follow me, Dobbs. <laughs> Again, they make these old jokes work. I'm not sure how. Captain Parmenter has just gotten the word that the Secretary of War is coming to give someone a medal, but nobody seems to know who. Has one of you performed an act of courage about which he is so modest he is not telling us? <laughs> this is your last chance now. Will the guilty brave man please take one step forward? Nobody has any idea what he's talking about. He starts asking individual soldiers. In the Crimea! I turned to Davy. Crockett, that is. I'm a, I'm a clava. Rausbitten the horses for a mile. All right, that'd be enough. Oh, I had to break what was an old knife. I called it a duffy knife. Yeah, yeah. Three of them were coming. Man, right. Man, right. Man, 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 Cousin, let us not lose heads. Aegon is business partner. I come here to put him out of business. Assuming the noble recipient lasts long enough for the secretary to get there. We attack for courage and kill Corporal. <laughs> My cousin, the warrior. And his mother wanted him to become Big medicine man. Uh, he was both. He wasn't a chief, but he was a warrior and a leader on top of being a medicine man. Speaking of warrior leaders, Jane rode out to find Captain Parmenter with some big news. He and Dobbs have finished covering the bear pit. Well, the Secretary of War is coming out here to give you a medal. Oh, no, 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 I, I hardly think it's me, Jane. Wilton Parmenter, your trouble is you're just too modest. I can see it now. The secretary will come up to you with a great big gold medal and pin it. I know. I know. Right here. <laughs> Considering what happened the last time he got a medal, you can't blame him for leaning away from it a little. Though perhaps not quite that far. O'Rourke and Agarn are waiting for a shipment to arrive on the stage. 
there's something else on the stage. Sarge, I want you to meet my girl. Oh, pleased to meet you, Pussycat. I'm here for the ceremony. Ceremony? You mean we're going to get married? You said you've been engaged for seven years, so it might be an idea whose time has come. Sure, after. After? After what? After the Secretary of War gives you the medal. Medal? Me? What medal? What, 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 what? The medal for killing Geronimo. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, man, I'm gonna. He didn't faint. He's improving. Ah, yeah, uh, okay, well, I'm very sorry, ma'am, but I'm afraid he won't be able to attend the ceremony. Why not? Yeah, the battle fatigue, don't you recognize it? The quickening of the pulse, the pounding of the heart. This man needs to be alone. I used to be in the medical corps. What this man needs is isolation, a complete rest. Now he's free to faint. O'Rourke figures Agarn is safe as long as he doesn't accept the medal. He'll keep out of sight, and O'Rourke will tell the secretary and everybody else that he's sick. I'm going to turn this medal over to you as commandant of this unit, and when Corporal Aegon recovers, you can present it to him. I shall, sir. The secretary recounts Aegon's brave deed in slaying Geronimo, and it's time for... Uh, oh, no, it's time for the cannon salute. Corporal Aegon will go down in history as the man who slew Geronimo. <laughs> Geronimo might take issue with that statement. Corporal Agarn sure does. It took him a little longer than expected to get there because he was weighed down by 117 knives. I think he's feeling better. He's out of bed. Geronimo! <laughs> he's unarmed, man! I want him taken alive! Since F Troop is a cavalry unit, naturally they all take off after him on foot. In the bear trap, Captain! Okay, I think everybody except Vanderbilt has fallen in that thing at least once. Get him over there and let's wrap this up. Ah, a stroke of genius, Mr. Secretary. What? Oh, yes, a brilliant plan by Captain Parmiter to capture Geronimo. It was? Oh, yes, he figured by claiming he was killed, we'd bring Geronimo out of hiding. Really, Sergeant? Uh, Corporal Agarn was just bait in the trap. Well, <laughs> Oh, I tell you, sir, that Captain Parmiter can outthink any Indian in the West. Does he get the medal, then? Captain Parmiter? Sir, this belongs to you. I guess that's a yes. He can show it to Geronimo. I'm going back to Clarence. I can trust him. Yeah? Just ask for change of a dollar and see what happens. Him and his crooked change maker. Pussycat. Goodbye, Corporal Sir. You don't call a Corporal Sir. It's finally time for that romantic little picnic. Would you open that? Oh, yes. Well, you earned that medal for sure. He was show one mean engine. Well, after he goes on trial at Fort Bravo, he won't be around to be mean for a long, long time. Oh, that, that's a shame. Don't worry, he likes pickles. He'll clean that up for you. Don't worry, Jane. I'll handle this. Well, nuts. The bear was really looking forward to those pickles, too. If you're enjoying this, be sure to click the thumbs up button to show you like it. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the face right here and get it done. And don't forget that you can become a patron and help keep this kitty fed. The link is below. Until next time.